Howdy howdy, this is Mr. Potter. In our previous videos we talked about how to encode text using either ASCII or Unicode. So what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about bitmaps and how we can encode and decode bitmaps. So I'm going to go to this picture here. I've got the letter Q and I've got it in this 8x8 eight eight, uh, set of boxes. And so what you notice is that some of the boxes are filled in. That's what I've got marked with these little blue circles. Some of these boxes are not filled in, so they're empty. And so I can think of these as either being a 1 or a 0. And so we call this a bitmap because I'm treating this as a map of bits. Remember we talked when we were talking about binary that we talked about binary digits. And so I can talk about this being empty being a zero. This is empty, so it's a zero. This is turned on, it's full, so that's a one, 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 zero, zero. So I can represent this row in my bitmap as zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero. Now this is a binary expression. This is in base two, but I just have a sequences of ones or zeros. Zero if the spot is empty and one if the spot is filled. And I can do that for every row here. So I can say this second row is zero, one, representing this first base. And then I've got a gap of four. And then I've got a one, zero. And then I continue one and then six zeros and then a one for this one followed by six zeros and then a one. And this row actually gets repeated. So it's the exact, oops, exact same binary representation. This row is also a repeat. And then this next row is the same thing except I do have a spot here. This is the top of the crossbar for the Q. So I'm gonna have four zeros then a one, zero, one. And then I've got zero, one, representing this first spot. Zero, 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 one, zero. And then I have zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one. And so this is my binary representation where zero represents a bit or a pixel that's not marked. And one represents a pixel that is marked. And if I was clever, I could probably take an eraser, erase all of these zeros. Come on. My eraser is not very responsive today. But if I erase all these zeros, I can almost make out the shape of the queue just by looking at the bits that are included here. So a bitmap is one way that we can represent a graphic object as opposed to using the ASCII values to represent data in a computer. I can represent data pictographically by ones where I want the pixels to be included and zeros elsewhere. Now, I'm doing this as binary, but I could also do this as hexadecimal. So when I look at this and I see that I have one, 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 and then zero, excuse me, one, zero, zero, zero. This first group of four here, which I did in, in maroon, that is a hexadecimal byte. Remember, this is my one's place, my two's place, my four's place, and my eight's place. And then for this next group of four bits, that also is a hexadecimal byte because I have an eights place, a fours place, a twos place, and a ones place. So I'm looking at this and I've got eight plus four is 12, 12 plus two is 14, 14 plus one is 15. And then I have to remember that A is 10 and B is 11 and C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, and F is 15. These letters A through F were how we addressed hexadecimal digits that were had a value larger than nine. So I could represent these maroon bits, the ones that I've got here, as an F because that adds up to 15. And I can represent the second set as an eight. 
And so I've got this hexadecimal byte here, F8, which represents this line of code. Now that certainly is a lot better than seeing 1111100 one, 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 zero, zero, zero in base 2. This base 16 representation is much more succinct. And so this is going to be a little bit helpful for us to do. So if I continue this for each of these following rows, uh, there's a group of four, so that's just an eight. And then here's my next group of four, and that's just a four. Then I have another eight and a four, because this is a repeat. Then I have another 15 and an eight, because this is exactly the same as the first row, so that would be F8. Then I've got an eight and one makes a nine. But for this group of four bytes, uh, this group of four bits, there's nothing filled in, so that would be a zero. Then over here I have eight and eight. Again, remembering that I'm looking at each of these as a group of four bits to make a hexadecimal uh, group. Here I've got eight and four, and this is also eight and four. So I've got each of these hexadecimal bytes represents a row of eight bits. So this hexadecimal byte here represents this row of my graphic in this eight by eight cube. Now I'm using eight by eight cubes just for convenience sake because a byte is eight bits. And each one of these squares here represents either being on or off. So this is one way that I could write this, and it's certainly a lot better than writing ones and zeros. This takes up much less space on a sheet of paper. And one of the things that I could do is I could take these values and actually make it into what we call a hexadecimal string. So here I've got this question mark pictograph. So if I was to write this as a hexadecimal byte, this first part would just be 2 and 1. This next part is 8 and 4, so the first hexadecimal digit would be 3, the next hexadecimal digit would be 12, which is letter C. Then if I continue, this is going to be 4 and 2, so this would just be 4, 2. This next row would be 0 and 2. This next row would be 0 and 4. This next row would be 0 and 8. This next row would be 0 and 8 again, because it's a repeat. And then I've got 0, 0. And then 0, 8 for this final row. So now I have this hexadecimal string, this 3, C, 4, 2, 0, 2, 0, 4. 0, 8, 0, 8, 0, 0, 0, 8 in base 16. This is a representation for this question mark pictograph. Now, I'd, I'd use letters in the first two examples, and this is often how fonts are rendered on a system. So if I wanted to see the physical representation of a character, there's going to be some encoding of what that character looks like. And of course, it depends if I'm using a font that is sans serif or if I'm using a serifed font as to how those representations would look. Now, I can work backwards the exact same way. So if I have a binary bitmap, then all I have to do is make sure that I shade in the ones and don't shade in the zeros. So I've got shade, don't shade, don't shade, don't shade, don't say don't do shade, and don't shade. And then I'm going to shade the first two in this representation, then skip three, and then shade two. Then I'm going to shade, skip, shade, skip, shade, skip, shade, skip, and then I'm going to shade, skip, skip, shade, skip, skip, shade. Then here I'm going to shade just the first and seventh, and this actually gets repeated for the final four rows. And so what I notice is that I've got a graphical 
representation of the letter M. And of course, if I wanted to, I could fill this in a little bit nicer, but that really isn't necessary. What's really necessary is the fact that I've represented in binary the individual blocks, the bits that need to be turned on and off respectively to represent the character M on my screen in this graphic method. And of course I'm doing that for binary but I could have just as easily done this in hexadecimal. I just have to remember to convert each of these hexadecimal bytes into binary. So if I take a look at this first one, E is, well let's see, A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14. So I know that 14 is 8 plus 4, that's 12, plus 2 more, plus nothing. So I know that I'm going to have to shade this one in, and this one in, and this one in, and skip this one. And then I've got 7. 7 is 4 plus 2 plus 1, so that's going to be the last three bits that end up getting shaded. Then I've got C. C is 12. 12 is 8 plus 4, so that's going to shade just the first two bits. And 3 is 2 plus 1, so that's going to shade the last two bits. Then I've got A. A is 10. So 10 is 8. 4 is too much, but 2 will work. And then I don't need the 1. So that means this bit's going to be shaded, and this bit's going to be shaded. And for 5, I know that 4 plus 1 will give me 5. So that means that I'm going to have this bit shaded and this bit shaded. Here I have 1, 8. So 1 is just going to be a 1, which is just going to be this bit. And 8 is just the 8, so that's going to be this bit. And I have a repeat, 1 and 8. I have a repeat of A5, which is this bit and this bit and this bit and this bit. Then I've got C3, which is a repeat of the second row, which is the first two bits and the last two bits. And then I have E7, which is going to be a repeat of the first row. So I've got the first three bits and the last three bits. And so I've got this situation where I have essentially an arrow pointing in each of the four directions. Or if you want to think about it, I could think of this as being a serifed letter X because I can think of these things kind of being connected. I could think of this as X marks the spot and here is my treasure. So what we've learned today is that we can use both binary and hexadecimal to represent bitmaps, to represent graphical representations of the characters that we would see. Not just letters, I could do numbers the same way, I could do symbols, anything that I could make a picture of by turning certain blocks on and certain blocks off. And if you recall, we did talk about the hexadecimal string, so I could take this, just write this as E7, C3, ooh, that's horrible, C3, A5, 1, 8, 1, 8, A5, C3, E7. And so this would be a hexadecimal string representation of this bitmap that we have here. So we have the way to transmit back and forth between bitmaps and binary representation or hexadecimal representation, as well as going from hexadecimal representation or binary representation to a bitmap. Now, there's a wonderful illustration of this, how this was used in old school computer programming, but it's still used to this day, and I'm going to have a link down in the description to help you out with that. So, once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.